Hello everyone, welcome to the ME new video. Um, today we're talking with uh, Aaron Ellison um, about his work with colleagues uh, and his work is titled Experimentally Testing the Role of Foundation Species in Forests, the Harvard Forest Hemlock Removal Experiment. Hello Aaron, how are you? I'm fine Graziella, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you. <laughs> um, tell us about where you are, it doesn't look like an office. Well, it's it's the kind of office we have here at Harvard Forest. So I'm uh, I'm sitting here in a uh, in a hemlock stand, about a 250 year old hemlock forest here in the central part of Massachusetts in the United States. And uh, although many of you know that, probably know that Massachusetts is one of the most densely populated states in in the United States. In fact, here where we are, about two hours uh, west of the coast. Um, we're in the least densely populated, most heavily, heavily forested part of the state. This, uh, this region is about 90% uh, forest cover um, with deciduous forests and conifer forests such as this one. So it's a really nice place to work on a, on a beautiful spring day. Great. Excellent. Uh, so today I just wanted to ask you some questions. My first one is, what is the main idea behind your work? So the, the main idea behind this, this work is to understand and explore the role of foundation species in forested ecosystems. So foundation species, such as eastern hemlock, the, the kind of tree that dominates this forest here, are species that uh, create and structure habitats for other species uh, that co-occur with them and which uh, have a disproportionate effect on the ecosystem processes, the fluxes of nutrients and energy through the system. And so on the one hand, we're very interested in just how it is that foundation species work and how foundation species really do create and structure, structure ecosystems on land. Secondly, um, these trees here uh, are threatened by an exotic insect, the hemlock woolly adelgid, that was introduced into, into the United States about 50 years ago and has been spreading uh, throughout the range of hemlock in eastern North America. And uh, in many places, hemlock forests have completely died. The trees have completely died. And we're interested in understanding what happens to a forested ecosystem when you take the, the foundation species out of it. So, so those are the two, the two big questions here. Great. And so how does your work advance methodology in, eco in ecology and evolution, you think? So, so we identify two big advances uh, methodologically with the, the Harvard Forest Hemlock Removal Experiment. The first advance is one of, of scale and duration. Most ecological field studies are done for three to five year periods in relatively small uh, experimental plots, meters to tens of meters in size. Um, but to really understand how forested ecosystems work, you have to work in forest time and on forest scale. So this experiment is designed to last decades and, uh, and the experimental manipulations are done at the scale of hectares. And so really you have to, you methodologically, we're in a, in a really good position here at Harvard Forest. We're a long-term ecological research site. We own about uh, 1,500 hectares in this part of the state. So we have a large land base that, that we can do manipulative experiments on. We have control, uh, ownership control of our land, so we can guarantee that we can uh, we can run these experiments for a very long time. So so we have some logistical opportunities here that, that are not in place every day. The second big methodological um, advance here is that in a sense, this is this is a uh, an experimental before after control impact experiment, and classic before after control impact ex uh, studies. The, the the methodology has been around for about 50 years, but it's based on observational studies. The idea that something is going to happen, a power plant is going to get sited, forest is going to get cut, and that's the impacted site. And as investigators, as researchers, we don't usually have control over that impacted site. We usually only have one of them. And then we try and look around for a nearby control site that we can compare it with, one or more control sites, and uh, do our best to match it, do our best to get enough time series data, do our best to, uh, to see what the actual impacts of the, of the impact site are. In contrast here with the Harvard Forest Hemlock Removal Experiment, 
we set up the impact sites, we set up the control sites, we identified them well in advance, we can match them for environmental characteristics, site characteristics, species characteristics. We, can, we establish the plots, we let them uh, essentially sit and run and be monitored for long enough before time so that we have adequate advanced data to get good time series analysis, and then we apply our impact um, in this case, either cutting the trees down and simulating a logging operation, which is one management response to the adelgid, and the other um, killing trees slowly like an adelgid does as the adelgid gets here. Um, and we're able to, uh, to apply more statistical power to, um, to our experiments because we have an experimental replicated before after control impact study where we have adequate time series, adequate replication, and adequate spatial scaling. And so um, while the statistics aren't especially new and novel, and, and in principle, the methodology isn't, isn't something that couldn't have been done before, we have the ability to do it on a spatial and temporal scale um, with the kind of control that most ecologists can only dream of. That's really great. And, and so do you think who could actually apply this method and how could it be applied? So, so there are two audiences that, that this kind of experiment uh, is sort of pitched at, if you will. One, uh, one audience is basic theoretical ecologists uh, who do standard ecological field work um, who are interested in scaling up their kinds of experiments, either on foundation species in whatever habitat, um, and, uh, and want to, to have validation for this kind of methodology. And so simply being able to say, yeah, this really is plausible to do is a, is a big deal. In addition, because Harvard Forest has invested an enormous amount of resources into setting up and maintaining this experiment, we're delighted to have researchers from all over the world come in and collaborate with us and take advantage of this experimental infrastructure to design their own studies that could take advantage of the, the now eight years of legacy data that we have on this study. The second big audience for this experiment is the, uh, is the management community, the forest management community, the pest management community, that's very interested in understanding how to respond to and how to deal with uh, the spread of the hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, we have about 6 million hectares of hemlock uh, in eastern North America, and much of it um, south of here is, is not in very good shape. A lot of it's dead or dying, falling apart. Um, how do managers respond to this, and what are going to be the responses of the management options? Either cut the trees down, let them fall apart in place, replant, reseed these forests, whatever the responses are. How do we go about making recommendations? We can use these experimental plots as demonstrations to show how different management uh, options will work. Um, we can also use this kind of methodology as an informational educational tool to the forestry community to say you could use the management areas that you're working on in the same way as an experimental uh, site to uh, learn more and to adapt your management as, as you go through. So those are those are some of the key audiences that we uh, we work with in, in our project. Thank you. And finally, do you think you could show us a little bit of the forest? I can I can do my best given the limitations of a you know one meter uh, cord on my camera. But let me uh, let me point out some of the, the the key features here. So as I pointed out, we're in a in a hemlock forest. It's about 200 and 250 years old here, and um, one of the things you can see as I pan the camera around, the trees are quite large. Um, there's the understory is really quite sparse. The, the canopy is all hemlock and the understory, which has this deep uh, organic layer and, and not a lot of light, is really colonized mostly by more hemlock. And it, it helps itself in a way. You know? So right down here, we've got a, a fallen hemlock log that's behaving like a nurse log. And, and we've got new hemlock seedlings getting established right on it. Fantastic. Very much. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, and as I said, if anyone's interested in, in collaborating or participating in this, please give us a call. Great. Thanks, Aaron.